Greetings everyone, Fru here, welcome to the channel. Today, we're gonna to do a demo showing you how to set up SQL tools for your development with uh, Snowflake. SQL tools is an extension that allows you to connect with a wide variety of RDB MSs from within this Visual Studio environment. For folks who develop with Snowflake, you can leverage the Snowside UI, which is a modern web-based UI for development, but for Whatever reason, maybe just out of the workflow you currently have, if Visual Studio Code is part of your, your development workflow, then you might want to look at connecting from within Visual Studio Code into Snowflake. And that's what we're going to see in the demo for today. First things first, to work with this, we're going to need the SQL Tools extension. You're going to want to go to extension. Let's zoom in here. Search for SQL Tools. This is going to bring up SQL tools and then you're going to click on install that extension. You can see over close to 2 million downloads, a pretty popular extension. Once that's done, it's going to show up here on the left side of our navigation pane. You can click on that extension. I already have this uh, set up because I did an installation before, but for you, you might not see any connection uh, here working. In that case, to connect to your Snowflake instance, you're going to have to go in and set up that connection. You can connect and do development against your Snowflake instance. To make that happen, there are a couple of things that I needed. If I go in here, I have this existing connection and I try to connect. It might give me a problem and say a Snowflake driver. And if you can look below here, Snowflake driver is not installed. This wouldn't work because the Snowflake driver is missing, but that's an easy problem to solve. So let's go ahead and close this. We're going to go back to extension and you're going to want to search for, for Snowflake driver. There are a couple of drivers. There is this, but what you want to search for is this one Snowflake driver for SQL tools by Peter over 30,000, close to 30,000 downloads. We're going to go ahead and install that driver. It takes a few seconds and the driver is installed. Once that's installed, we're going to go back to SQL tools. Now things are looking a little bit more cleaner. Let's uh, close this. Now, if I go in, we can uh, either come in here and click on the new, this button. This would allow us to create a new connection. So we're creating a new connection to Snowflake. The driver shows up here because we installed the driver. If it doesn't, you can click on get more drivers and you can find the driver that you need. We already did the Snowflake one, so we're all good. Next thing is just to click on Snowflake. This is where you get to put in the connection information you need to talk to the Snowflake environment. Your connection name, let's say demo hub, your account, you're going to want to put that account, username, the means of authentication, either by user, key pair, browser-based SSO or OAuth. And then as well, if you're going by username and password, fill that in as well as the warehouse. I typically don't do the OCSP. But if you need uh, necessitates that, then go ahead and fill that. Once that's done, let's go ahead and close this. I'm going to go back to SQL tools. And I have a connection here, an existing one. Let's go ahead and edit that. It does have my account. You just want to go ahead and copy uh, this account locator here. And then username, password, and the warehouse. We can test this connection. So connection was successful. We can save our connection. It does show you the JSON of what has been saved. Snowflake driver through authenticating in here, going into that uh, environment. Let's go ahead and connect. Now we're connected. And if I open up my browser, I can see all my schema, my information ready for development, all the tables and the views. Unfortunately, I have no tables or views in there to work. But I do have some different uh, databases that are available for me to use. And what we're going to do next is let's see how we can run a few simple queries. I'm going to go ahead and bring in the TPCDH sample queries that we have. Before I run that, you're going to select what you want to run. And if we can zoom in here for a second, put that to the side. You can either right click run selected query. 
And so this should run and show as a result on the right side. Query executed successfully. What this query has done, it's changed our context for us as schema. Let's go ahead and run this. Select and run. So all of this is running. We have our result. If I go back into Snowflake activity history, as a user, I'm developing with using Visual Studio code, but the results are all showing up here within my environment. This is like, if this is something that fits your workflow, it could definitely be a good option uh, to look at. Some of the reasons why people might want to do this is because now you have a SQL file sitting locally on your machine, even though you're talking to Snowflake by the driver. You can then version control this, put that in your CI CD pipeline, send that into your source code for management. And there are a lot of reasons why people might want to go down this route. Plus, once you have the result here, you can go ahead and export the result. If you want, you can rerun the query. There are a lot of things that you can do um, here from a UI uh, perspective. Check this out. Uh, if this is something that fits your workflow, I think it could be beneficial for you.